focus bug basics. All right, it's time to get to know your friend, the focus bug. The focus bug lives right here in the middle of our screen. And it's going to be the main way that you're going to control focal point. It's called a focus bug because it looks like a little wireframe insect. You can see it has a body. It has little legs that stick out of it. Those are the appendages with the terminal that's white. And it also has antennas, which are going to be the longer appendages with the open circles at the end. The focus bug controls the size and the shape of the sweet spot. The sweet spot is the area of the image that's going to stay sharp or is going to remain in focus. Anything outside of the shape of the focus bug is going to be the area that's going to get blurred by focal point. When you click in the middle of the focus bug's body, you'll see a round grid shape appear. And that grid shape is the sweet spot. And you can adjust the size, the shape, and the position of it using the focus bug. First, let's talk about adjusting the position. You'll notice that it's centered underneath the focus bug's body. So simply clicking on the focus bug and moving it around the scene will change the position of the focus bug. Then to change the size or the shape of the focus bug, click and hold on any of the legs that stick out of the body. You can then make the leg longer to increase that axis of the focus bug. You can also rotate the shape of the focus bug by twisting the legs. And this will rotate it to create an oblong shape. By selecting the other legs, you can change the width. This allows you to selectively control the size and the shape of the focus bug. Now before we talk about the antennas, let's talk about the other shape of the focus bug. So far we've shown you the round focus bug. And if I show you the mask, if I go to the focus brush pane and I select show mask, you'll actually be able to see the black and white mask that the focus bug creates. And you'll watch as I move it around and if I change its size and position, you'll see how the shape of the focus bug is round. Now, if we go to the focus bug pane, and we go to the shape pop-up, we can change the shape from round to planar. Planar is going to create more of a square-shaped focus bug. You'll notice that the body changes from round to square, and instead of having four legs sticking out of the body, there's only going to be two. But it still works the same way. I click in the center of the focus bug's body to change the position of the sweet spot, and with the legs, I can click to change the width of the focus bug, and I can rotate it to change the angle of the focus bug. The planar focus bug is going to be used more for simulating depth of field. It'll look more like a tilt shift lens or a view camera adjustment. The round focus bug is designed more to look like a selective focus lens or a selective focus filter. All right, while we're still here in mask view, let's talk about one of the antennas, the right hand antenna controls the amount of blur with the length, and it also controls what's called the feather. The feather is how quickly it transitions from black to white, or how quickly it transitions from in focus to out of focus. So as I grab that right hand antenna, if I wiggle it down, you'll see when it gets to a low feather amount, it has a very hard edge between what's in focus and what's out of focus. This is probably gonna create a pretty unrealistic transition. What we really want is something where the feather becomes wider. And as I go all the way up to a really high feather, you can see how that transition becomes very large. This is going to create a very soft transition between the area that's in focus and the area that's out of focus. So wiggling that right hand antenna is going to control the feather or how quickly we transition. I'm going to go ahead and turn the mask off here so that we can see what this would actually look like in real life. Now with this image, I want to keep the roadway in the foreground in focus I want to force the buildings in the background out of focus. So the way we would do that is to click on our focus bug, and we want to position it over the area that we want to keep sharp. In this case, the roadway at the bottom. Then using the legs, I just change the thickness of the area that I want to keep sharp. So as I adjust it, in real time, you'll be able to see the image update. And I'm just going to continue to adjust it until the roadway stays sharp, but the buildings in the background go out of focus. I can then adjust the amount of blur and the feather on the blur using that right hand antenna. So let's start off and we're going to look just at the amount. So if I use a very low amount, you can see how the area that goes out of focus is very subtle and slightly out of focus. 
and as I increase the length, it's going to continue to get more and more out of focus. And if I go way out to the end, you'll see how it becomes very out of focus. And even the highlights start to take on the shape of the aperture of the lens. We'll talk more about that in a Controlling the Blur movie. Now the angle controls that feather that we talked about when we showed you the mask. And if I wiggle this up or down, I can change that feather at a low feather amount. You can see how the transition from in focus to out of focus is fairly fast. It's a pretty hard edge. And if I move it the opposite direction, if I move it up, we'll be able to create a softer transition where it goes from in focus to out of focus in a more natural way. On the left-hand antenna of the focus bug, we control the vignette. The vignette allows us to darken or lighten the edge of the image. The vignette shape is going to follow the shape of the focus bug by default. However, you can turn that off and have it only affect the edges by disabling the vignette follows focus bug toggle in the vignette pane. We'll talk more about that in the options movie. If I take the left-hand antenna and I move it down, you'll see how the corners of the image go dark. And if I move it up, the corners of the image are going to lighten. Changing the length of the left-hand antenna controls the midpoint, or basically how large the vignette is compared to the sweet spot. Let's go ahead and use a dark vignette. I'm going to make this a little easier to see. You can see if I use a really dark vignette and I adjust the midpoint, you can see how it changes basically how large the vignette is. Vignettes are a great way to burn down the corners of the image and help you reduce distractions. But it's one of the last things you'll want to adjust. I'm just going to hit the reset button in my vignette pane to set the vignette back to neutral. So basically there, there is no vignette. At the top, in the focus bug pane, there's one other option I want to show you. And that's the focus bug opacity. The opacity allows you to add a little bit of blur through the focus bug. So if I wanted to actually have some blur in the sweet spot, we can do that by reducing the opacity. Now, by default, the opacity is going to be at 100%. So that whatever is black in our mask is going to be completely protected. I'm going to turn my feather up a little bit so we can see this easier. If I reduce the opacity, you'll see how the area that used to be black in the mask turns gray. That means we're adding blur to that area. Let's go back to the regular view so you can see this in action. As I reduce the opacity down, you'll see how the foreground starts to go out of focus as well. And if I reduce the opacity all the way down to zero, the entire image will go out of focus. Adjusting the opacity when you're using multiple focus bugs is a good way to control depth of field. And we'll talk about that in its own movie as well. At the bottom of the focus bug pane is the focus bug list. It'll list the focus bugs that you're using. By default, you only have a single focus bug, but you can create multiple focus bugs by pressing the plus button. Each time you press plus, it'll create a new focus bug. And whichever focus bug is highlighted is the one that you'll be adjusting with the focus bug tool. You'll notice when you have multiple focus bugs that inactive focus bugs will be marked on your image by a small round circle. You can turn the effect of a focus bug on and off by clicking on its eyeball. And to delete a focus bug, just press the minus symbol. All right, now that you know how to use the focus bug, let's get to work at controlling the depth of field by adjusting the blur options.